Marino Show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Marino Show. I'm your host, David Marino, and I'm welcoming back Tony Hack Covington. I loved interviewing him last time. He hosts his own show, Hack's Horror Show. He's a wrestler. He's an actor and so many other things. Hack, thank you for being back with me today. Hi, kids. Round two. I'm so happy to be back. Thank you. Thank you. This, yeah. is, this was one of my favorite shows to ever be on. So very privileged. Very, very happy to get to talk to you again. Thank you so much for saying that. And thank you for coming back on. You know, I love what you do. As we talked in the last episode, you host your own show, Hacks Horror Show. Yes. And you have new episodes coming up. Can you talk about that? Oh, yes. We have, uh, we have brand new episodes. We have uh, in this season, uh, we've gone all out. One episode was filmed and done out there in Odessa, Texas from Slash and Chill Productions. So right out of the gate, we got a Slash and Chill episode. Uh, we have so many more um, coming out. There's some out right now. If you go to my Vimeo or if you go to the Monster Channel, those are already playing. We have tons more updating. But we have very special uh, exclusive episodes coming. Uh, just came June 30th. Actually, was the first one drops coming to CheapAFVideo.com. If you go to CheapAFVideo.com, those are the episodes that every censor Every friend that I know, like, closed the door, and they were like, Tony, we can't put this on television. Like, no one, like, you need to take this home and burn it. No one should ever be allowed to see what you've made here. So, really excited about those episodes. The first one on Cheap AF Video right now, uh, it's very cool. You get to see a cameo from uh, Lloyd Kaufman from uh, Trauma Entertainment, and all uh, the Toxic Avengers there as well. Uh, we got that cameo. We got uh, star uh, Michael Ocho Torano from uh, the actor. He he uh, co-stars in this with me, and we have a lot of crazy stuff. I got a silent movie that's just weird. Uh, I got a really cool music video produced and directed by August Aguilera from Strange Films, all in this one episode. And uh, pretty much, you see Hack's head in a disgusting toilet. You see dead bodies and a little bit of like uh necrophiliac type of stuff like it's pretty bad so if you got like a two bucks you can go watch it on cheap bay of videos and i got more coming we got this season i went all out there's gigantic monster uh, animatronics and uh the the bed from the exorcist bouncing up and down a lot of gross out stuff uh, you see, I see a horse in a field and it's covered in flies and you see me just trying to help the horse <laughs> like that's in there for some reason. Uh, me lost it at Screenville. Screenville, um, uh, Screenville is a haunted house here in Knoxville. Go check out Screenville and you get to see me and all my shenanigans this whole season running around that place. Uh, it's horrifying and scary. I, I do cocaine off a dead body booty and... <laughs> All kinds of stuff. I don't. I don't know how to describe it without giving everything away. But that's pretty. Uh, pretty gnarly if you go to cheap a video. And then I have the regular episodes are dropping nonstop. I got a hype video. I'm gonna bring out soon uh, to tell everybody. But there's ones out there right now. And the so regular like, episodes they air on Knoxville Public Media and also Monster Channel. Or tell me where all those air. Yes, you can watch all those on uh, Knoxville Community Media. Uh, you could and it's streamed, so uh, all it comes on local cable here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Well, Knox County, uh, we reach like all of East Tennessee. But if you go to KCM.org, uh, Knoxville Community Media, if you go to that, they always have a live stream of everything that's aired, so you can watch anywhere in the world. Uh, that's my home base. That's that's where my heart is. That's where I started. But you can also see me on the Monster Channel, and you can also see me on uh, my Vimeo channel. Uh, you can you can probably find all that on YouTube from the Bootleggers if you look it up. Uh, there's a guy, uh, uh, Chris Chris Lonis or Vile Boy or Chris Extreme. Uh, the name of the channel changes a lot, but if you look at Pax Horror Show, that guy's probably got it all on YouTube. Uh, and then my Vimeo. That thing's like my hub there, the Roku channel, the Hacks Horror Show Roku channel. You can add it. It's free. Uh, they're already on there. 
it's all over the place. Uh, just get on the old Google machine and put in Hacks Horror Show and those things just start popping up. Uh, or get on your Roku. If you got a Roku TV, get the app, watch it on there. Enjoy the Monster Channel. There's tons of horror hosts on the Monster Channel. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, the Like I said, the Vimeo, YouTube, everything. Knoxville Community Media. I am I'm all over the place. I'm making sure no ma- if you live in a cave, you'll see me crawl in there. I'm like, hey, buddy, you got a TV? Have you seen this show yet? I walked inside a place last night and I looked over and I was like, I know she had a Roku TV and you're not watching Hacks Horror Show. Should I leave? Like, I'm like, I take this offensive. Like, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm all over the place. New episodes dropping constantly. And then the cheap afvideo.com. Uh, not just my show, but exclusive content to that website uh, with an amazing, amazing, uh, some of the best TV shows I've ever seen are on that. And then my stuff that's too hardcore for anything mainstream where all the suits and ties are like somebody get on the phone, call Tony, what the hell has he done now? Uh, those those episodes will be popping up on a cheap AF video. Cool. And for people who haven't watched the show, as we talked in the last episode, you interview people, but you show films. This is all kind of horror related. You do your own skits. You know, yep. you do a lot of different things in your show. That's that's very um, unique. You don't see this in other horror shows. I mean, for when I've watched it, it's it's something that I haven't really seen. That's what I love about it. Thank you, man. Uh, it, it, it's a uh, it's a Mister Rogers for grownups. Put it that way. It's uh, I'm a horror host. I always show. Uh, I try to, uh, depending on how I'm editing stuff or doing whatever. But I always try to show you a music video and a horror movie. And my job is I just present all the cool stuff everybody else is making. But uh, you can see music videos. You can see horror movies. Uh, my skits are out of control. Uh, normally, I look at the ratings, and that's all anybody's watching is the funny stuff I do, and then they skip through everything else. <laughs> but I got skits. I will interview people. I will have uh, celebrity cameos, or I got all kinds of stuff. I met a guy, a security guard in Cincinnati, Ohio, and he was explaining to me about how he uh, had prostate cancer. And so there's a segment on there with him warning everybody, you know, about uh, prostate cancer. <laughs> there's uh, me on the bed from The Exorcist. I'm trying to help a horse out. There is, uh, I got a mad professor on the show now, Professor Jeepers. And I'm proud to say Hacks Horror Show is the first horror show where it's my mad scientist is a legit real scientist. It's not a guy in a lab coat with uh, crazy hair. This this is an educator. This is a scientist, a real biologist on there. Um, first one ever. But yeah, we got uh, skits, movies, music videos, interviews, uh, crazy shenanigans for me have got to be uh, number one. Uh, there's no telling who you'll see, like I said, on that first one for Chief AF video that just came out. We have Lloyd Kaufman, the Toxic Avenger, and Michael Ocho Tarana, all thrown into one episode so you'll, you'll see a lot of a lot of wild stuff <laughs> well let's talk about some of the new stuff you're doing um you have new movies that you're working on and also new shows that are coming aside from hacks horror show you're working on some other shows first talk about the movie that we were talking about offline <laughs> because that <laughs> is hilarious that is, uh there's a new film coming out called raccoon we all, we all seen Cocaine Bear, and it was awesome, but Crack Coon, get ready. Uh, this one's going to be a little more wild. Uh, the trailer's doing very well. Quarter of a million views on it so far. Um, but Crack Coon there, if you uh, go to watch Crack Coon, uh, your buddy Hack here is the crazy uh, Crack Maker. Crack Baker? I don't know. I, oh, I like Crack Baker. There we go. That sounds good. Crack maker baker guy or whatever i'm the guy making the drugs in the science lab there uh, you see the orderly you know drag me into the room like make this crack i'm a madman in there um that was a, that was a very hard movie to get through there's a lot of real things in there <laughs> and a lot of fake things in there i won't tell you which one's which but uh it had me wanting to throw up in the corner the whole time shooting that part 
But yeah, uh, check out Crack Coon and uh, you see a little cameo for me. Uh, we did that. Uh, we, we, we just did a bunch of other stuff too. But uh, Tapeworm Z is still on its way out. It's going to be hitting theaters and DVDs very, very soon. Uh, that's from Slash and Chill Productions. Um, you will see me and all, all kinds of stuff. We have Camp Smokey from Big and Funky Productions coming out. Uh, do some voiceover work for it. But uh, Crack Coon, when Crack Coon drops, children, run to the theaters and watch watch this mad animal on drugs. <laughs> You're gonna, it's a horror comedy, and I think everybody's really gonna love it. On top of that, because you love to be busy, <laughs> you're yes. working on you're working on some other shows um, that are a little different from Hax Horror Show, but they're yes. they're certain extensions too. Can you talk about that? Uh, yes. Uh, number one, we have uh, with Wayne Wheeler. Uh, he, we are working on a uh, late night talk show, um, just like Conan O'Brien or Jay Leno, David Letterman, that type of uh, Craig Ferguson. Wow, is he even still around? What happened to Craig? We'll get back to that. Oh, I don't, no, I don't think Craig is around anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think I think he went back home. But uh, no, we have. Um, a late night talk show that we're uh, working on with that, uh, helping Wayne Wheeler uh, get that off the ground and uh, produce that. We have another show, uh, The What If Files, uh, with a big team of people that are investigating anything macabre, mysterious, uh, anything like that ghost, monsters, legends, lore, um, investigating all that stuff. And that one is a uh, huge, huge undertaking with all the cameras on so many people and all the microphones and you're in a place normally that doesn't have power or electricity or nothing like that. And, and not only am I on that show as part of the team, um, just because I'm the guy who's like, no, that's, I'm, I'm the first one to be like, no, that's not real. Or they're like, that room's scary. There might be something in there and I jump in head first. And I'm like, no, um, I went to Bobby Mackey's Haunted Honky Tonk and they have a well and they're like, oh, it's the gateway to hell. So what do I do is jump out of line, stick my head in there. And I'm like, I just see a center block and some cigarette butts like no, no, no fire, no monsters, no nothing. <laughs> like, uh, But we got What If Files, an investigation television show. And then we have a third television show. Uh, we're getting ready to start filming now. And that is uh, with uh, Grant. Grant is the biology professor for Pellissippi State. Uh, with him and some of the professors over at the University of Tennessee, we decided to get together with Professor uh, Jeepers and hack their uh, teaming up, going out there and learning all the weird things about the world uh, from the science and, and teaching kids about science and stuff like that. We are uh, talking with CBS and Fox right now, our local affiliates, about that Saturday morning show. So it's a little uh, spooky Bill Nye, if you want to, if you want to put it that way. Spooky Bill Nye with all the experts around, all for the uh, all for the kids, so we can teach them all the spooky things about the world and how it all works. Because um, uh, and but it's going to be lighthearted, fun educational so i'm very proud of that when everybody gets to see hacking a little bit of different light instead of just cussing and yelling and mutilating something and be, <laughs> and uh well if anybody goes to cheap af videos.com they'll it, it's the opposite of what i'm doing there <laughs> so yeah. very proud of that one. but what a late night show almost like a paranormal investigating show and then a science educational show all three in production at the same time, not to mention my new shows are dropping and it's con season. So, uh, yeah, I miss sleep. Uh, it's, that's, that's the thing of the past now. Uh, <laughs> just think about it every once in a while. I was going to say you are popular on the con circuit because not only are you a horror show host and an actor, but you had a really uh, very past in um wrestling which yes. was awesome and so for you is it important to be as versatile as you are I mean you do all these different shows but how does that feed your creative side 
Um, because you could just stick to Hacks Horror Show and, and do that. But you've really done a lot of other things where you've stepped out of your, I, I don't know, comfort zone, I guess, and maybe done a number of other things. How important is that for you as a creator to, to have those different, you know, projects going on? Uh, very 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 important uh it keeps everything going it keeps me uh i'm not one track so it keeps me uh thinking and being creative in so many different ways but the main thing is people have kind of grown grown fond of hack existing in like all these different universes like um we just did the heroes and legends show in gatlinburg where excuse me where, where i'm not only a guest but i'm also performing and doing all kinds of other stuff too and these are all heroes and legends it's all people uh from past present and the future and you will see a lot of the top guys from like wwe and wcw these big name stars and then people from the nwa and then you'll see uh my crazy self there as well um but with the professional wrestling and then like the movies and the TV shows and then the live events that I do, uh, uh, the hack character uh, exists in every one of these universes and the people have kind of are used to it. But I guess the biggest enjoyment is um, how do I pitch this? How do I sell tickets to this thing? How do I, how do I uh, bring, bring people there and entertain them the best way possible? Cause my biggest thing is no matter what I'm doing, uh, when people walk away, I want them to walk away smiling. And it's uh, it's hard. It's hard sometimes because I turn my brain on and it's in um, focus for this. And then I have to shift all that constantly. And now it has to be 100% towards this. So just switching it back and forth has been uh, pretty, pretty wild and going. But uh, it's kept me on my toes. I, I get new ideals constantly. And so much so that, uh, yeah, then I writing for other people, uh, set designs. It's, it's so much more than just the, uh, acting part or being hacked. It's the set designs. It's the, uh, it's the marketing for each event and where to hit it, where to do. And each one has its own like key demo. And so like, uh, putting everything, uh, ready for this and getting this ready. So it's a hundred percent great is, uh, Tackling all that at once, you know, people say, oh, well, maybe one don't get as much love as the other, but they're absolutely wrong. Uh, spreading me thin, but it ain't nothing, nothing I can't handle. Uh, I need, I got to build a team. I need some more people that know all the stuff I do, but uh, hack team, I uh, tend to be a really nice guy. So I'm the PR rep too, because everybody's like, well, just ask Hack. He knows everybody, and he, he's got a good relationship with everybody. Maybe he can help us get this done. How did you create the Hack character? Because you're very popular in terms of, like, in the area where you're at, and even, you know, other across the country. Like, you, you're at ribbon cuttings. You're, you're known yeah. in the community. You do a lot of work in the community. Um, how did you create this character and lead to what it's become today i knew that was me as soon as i heard the name hack i was like that's my identity that's it and i was like i can use that so many different ways like hack like something's chopping or the way I is very like if if you call somebody a hack i'm like i am absolutely that i worry and stress to the end and then i procrastinate sometimes and actually that started uh really really early i was a kid uh it was uh, like 1999 2000 and i wanted to do this i wanted to be this horror host wrestler and um you know even with uh high school they're having a full art scholarship i uh, went to the art institute of pittsburgh there uh for like half a semester and i was like no i don't want to draw pictures for disney or pixar uh Screw it. Screw the money. <laughs> the, I guess a bad, maybe a bad decision now. <laughs> uh, but I was like, no, no, screw the money. I want to be this wrestler and horror host. Uh, but I didn't even know where to start or anything. And I just got started in pro wrestling and uh, was getting the ideals for the horror host. Uh, and uh, I was in the back one day and I was coming up with all these different names. 
And it was just one of these guys, you know, from like uh, your local mall. You know, everybody used to go to the mall and you see the guy in the bondage trip pants. And he's got like the band t-shirt and his neck is all like stretched out where he's been sweating. And he's like standing in a circle and they're all sharing the same Taco Bell cup and the same cigarette. And they're like hanging out beside the arcade like they all day long. The mall rat is a mall rat guy. His name was uh, Chris, I believe. And he just walked by and he's like, you know how they have the guy called Cactus Jack, Mick Foley, Cactus Jack. And I was like, yeah. He's like, you should be like Cactus Hack instead of Jack because, well, are you holding a meat cleaver? And I'm like, yeah, I guess I am. And I was like, I hate the cactus part. I was like, but Hack. I was like, and it was boring right then. And then I transformed and Hack it was like, uh, me in real life, I'm very, uh, I talk in a panic sometimes. But normally I'm pretty chill and kind of bashful uh, sometimes, like being at home, just kind of quiet. Uh, if you get me out partying, I'm the guy who will sing karaoke. I will uh, scream and yell across the room. I get rowdy. But uh, the hack thing is so far removed from like who I really am. Hack is hack is completely evil, but uh, he's naive. He don't know that he's the bad guy. He thinks he's the good guy like uh I cut off on a Christmas episode, I cut off a guy's hand and to make cookies out of, and he's screaming at me and I don't understand why he is so mad at me because I'm trying to make cookies for everybody. <laughs> like uh, He's a very naive bad guy. So you'll see the personality things uh, change. And it was just like strictly that character, but being in movies and the video games and, uh, being on the board games and then being on live stages and then doing all these different avenues. It was very hard to stay true to the hack character and also have him exist in all these different universes at the same time. That was the hardest part was because, well, they see me on the horror show. Uh, I don't want to completely departure from the character when they see me live. Like I still want to be hack for them, but how do I make hack exist here and here and stay true to like who he is has been a huge challenge. But the naive bad guy, I'm the alternative uh, bizarro Mr. Rogers, because you would see Mr. Rogers interview people and uh, talk to people, then do like the puppet show and everything else. And so you will see Hack do all that. But uh, where Mr. Rogers gets more positive, you can see a lot of negative from Hack, but he don't understand that he's being negative. He's like, hey, why are you being a dick? And it's like, well, you shot me in the foot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I'm like, well, it's for charity. Like, I know I stabbed you, but I stabbed you for charity. Why are you angry? <laughs> like, put it this way, if Hack went to go read to children, um, Hack would walk into the room and pull out like a penthouse. And be like, I'm going to read all the lonely women who wrote to prisoners, you know, because uh, that's always in pit house. And uh, they, the teacher would run up and be like, oh, my God, you can't read that to children. What are you doing? Hack would be like, I'm not going to read this to children. What do you think? I'm some kind of monster. I'm just going to show them the pictures. Like, <laughs> he would like that would that's the best way to describe Hack. Be like, I'm not going to read this penthouse magazine to them. I'm just going to show them the pictures. Good God. Like. Why are you angry? <laughs> what I also love, and, and I know this isn't something you're going to like say publicly because you're humble about it, but we were just talking about the fact that, so you have this hat character, and yes, he does all these evil things, but it's sort of a wink and a nod. But a big part of, of what you do when you go to cons and when you sell merchandise and, and all of that is you donate a lot to yes. charity and give back to the community that you belong to. Um, how did that become such an important part of, of what you do? Because you wouldn't immediately, immediately associate Hack with doing these great things, but I love that you've taken the character, but you've also used it in a way that is beneficial and helpful to the community that you're in. Yes, absolutely. And that's some, one of the most important things to me is, uh, the community that I live in is, uh, you know, I'm still here in Knoxville and uh, still come from the same places. Uh, when me and Strange Films uh, just teamed up at uh, Central Cinema uh, to do a little uh, 
a little uh, film fest and we had the filmmakers come out and sit with us and talk and everything. But when I did that, the funny thing is that movie theater that we're in, uh, I used to walk by it every day as a kid. Uh, that was the neighborhood I grew up in. They called it Happy Holler. Uh, the hipsters are giving tours of Happy Holler now. And I'm like, great. But the movie theater itself, that's where I used to go like get my hair cut because it was free because it was a barber college. So they would cut my hair for free. And uh, we didn't have the money to go get a haircut. So uh, uh, I don't have it now. That's why I got a hat on because I look like a madman. Um, but the uh, that was my neighborhood and stuff like that. Uh, KCM was the neighborhood TV, and I grew up with uh, nothing. Uh, I don't have a relative. Like when I graduated high school, no one showed up. Uh, like there's nobody buying me a car or anything like that. Actually, uh, for Fulton High School, the graduating class, uh, Fulton High School, same high school I graduated from. A lot of uh, a lot of poor. Uh, poor neighborhoods uh these kids ain't really getting much or getting to do much so for that graduating class i for i put on a uh, wrestling event in someone's backyard and had all the kids come out so they could have fun and it could be safe and they could have a graduation ceremony and see hat get beat up just so they got something because no one's buying them a car for their graduation or anything like that and real life's about to hit them they're probably going to have a really hard job uh, getting out of high school or anything like that. And the statistics of some of them going to jail is very high. So I just wanted to have one good graduation party for them. So that, that's the thing about me. I'll come to your barbecue if I think it's for the right reasons and uh, party with you guys, or I'll go fly out and be in a movie somewhere, eat whatever I think is the best thing. I'll do it. But I, I like when I see people, man, I'm like getting into a convention is expensive uh already on its own and then you get there and then you know i always see like the kids like asking oh man i really want this and mom and dad like whispering down no you can't have that we, we can't get it so i'll give them a t-shirt i'll give them a sticker but uh anything you buy for me i'll donate to charity because i'm still uh uh hack still those people with all the charity work the community work uh all that stuff creatively uh creatively i'm maxed out on everything but the one thing I would love to do is just bring more people together and then be in the Horror Host Hall of Fame. Just being accepted by all my peers would be the best.